Friday, the 29th of May 2015, marked the beginning of a new dispensation in the governance of Abia State, with the swearing in of Dr. Okezien Victor Ibazo, the fourth executive governor of Abia State. I, Okezien Victor Chibikemi Ibazo, do solemnly swear, affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and that I will preserve protect and defend the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria so help me god the future looked bright but the challenges were many and diverse unfolding the template of his administration governor okay has defined this resolution to move the state forward this definition was hinged on five growth pillars which include education agriculture trade and commerce, small and medium enterprises development, and oil and gas. Alongside the enablers of these pillars, viz, security, infrastructure development, ease of doing business, healthcare, education, advocacy, among others. The intention was to touch the life of the rural as well as the urban dweller in the state, positively affect key areas of our lives as our people by investing in areas where the state has comparative advantage. Thus, in the eight years of the Ibazu administration, every local government area felt the impact of governance with some projects as testimonials. In the 31st year of its existence, Abia State, created in 1991, commissioned its first flyover located at Osisioma Junction, the point of entry into Aba. To its left is Abowari Road, which leads one into Aba. To its right, one can access part of Osisiomangwa, and going forward, one will find Ariara International Market, Aloji, Okwa, Ugunabo, River State, etc. Behind Osisioma flyover, one will find Umwahia, Okigwe, Enugu, etc. Now known as the Okezwabia flyover, this is the flagship project of the Okezinibazu administration. Construction of the flyover became very pertinent because hitherto, motorists would spend between four and six hours around this point due to the poor state of the road. Besides, there were no more trouble adjoining roads that could ease the traffic congestion at this point. Today, the flyover has drastically reduced travel time and facilitated free flow of traffic. No commuter now needs to spend an extra minute at Osisioma Junction or anywhere around it before getting into Aba. One aspect of these projects I am proud of is their strategic significance and economic importance. A project like the Usisioma Interchange has forever changed the traffic narrative at that junction. Users of that road in recent years will recall how they were often condemned to spend hours in traffic due to lockdown on the road at peak periods. Today, that episode is in the past and as there is now guaranteed seamless flow of traffic along that axis in addition to the aesthetic uplift of the general environment. One of the strong points of Governor Kizien Ibazu in road construction is his determination to tackle roads which were difficult to rehabilitate. For example, he handled the perennial breakdown of Aba Road through Eastern Comfort Hotel in Omaha. This road had defied the efforts of previous administrations, both military and civilian. The story is the same with East Street, where a blocked drain was discovered and opened up before construction of the road, which stands till date, among others. The Ibazu administration intentionally embarked on road construction and rehabilitation to grant access to the Abia rural areas in order to facilitate evacuation of farm produce from rural areas, enable children in rural communities attend school with ease, give people access to the major markets in the state, thus facilitating trade and commerce which Abians are known for. On his first work day after inauguration, Monday, 1st of June 2015, Governor Okezien Ibazu moved to the field where he flagged off the construction of seven roads Ukebu Road, Omni Drive, Omola, Eheri, Kamalo, Fox, and Old Express Roads. 
Fox Road was removed from the list to facilitate the search for a suitable contractor who would address its peculiar needs. <laughs> That is why I take my time, but I will deliver something that you will remember. I, I started to do this because the only way we can improve on our stock of road, Flavia, the very next day, Tuesday, the 2nd of June 2015, he inspected the 34 kilometer Ndioji Ndiokereke Arochuku Road and flagged off the rehabilitation and construction of various arterial roads. The Ibazo administration completed 232 road projects in the state. The adjoining Abowere Road which also Hiteto used to be a nightmare has been rebuilt, expanded, with relevant road furnishings installed. Roads abutting the Abowere Road have also been opened up to ventilate the city of Aba. We have a solid Ayabumweze absolute road built with our signature rigid pavement technology this road, as you will agree with me, is a beauty to behold and has enhanced the capacity of Abia State Teaching Hospital to deliver health care to the teeming populace. This marked the beginning of massive construction and rehabilitation of road projects across the nooks and crannies of Abia State as follows.
Other infrastructure delivered by the Okezinibazo administration include four new bridge projects in Aba, Ohafia, Arochuku, and Umunochi, Gali Erosion Mediation Project in Omoago, Ishingwomwaya North, Umogele Umoakunsulu in Isialangwa North, Umwezukunsulu in Isialangwa North. The Abia Investment House opposite the State Secretariat Complex, Omoahia. New Asopadek headquarters close to the new government house in Omoahia. The Ibazo administration built and donated 174 houses to indigent persons in the state through the office of the wife of the governor, Dr. Nkechi Ibazo. A new building for the Abia State Independent Electoral Commission, Absieg, was constructed. The Ibazu administration completed the International Conference Center ICC, which was initiated by the TAOG administration and the governor named it the Ochendo International Conference Center. Construction of the new government house in Omaha, which foundation was laid by the immediate past administration. The Jack and the Asube buildings initiated by the previous administration have equally been completed. The Asube building has been named the Maika Onyebuchi Memorial Building. Government equally drilled 13 number boreholes at different health centers in the state through the office of the wife of the governor. Through the Abia State Community and Social Development Agency, Abia CSDA, the government invaded virtually every nook and cranny of the state with over 550 projects such as market stores, electricity projects, Ball halls, town halls, customary courts, magistrates' courts, village halls, etc. The Abia State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission Asopadek has equally put up projects in oil producing communities and non oil producing communities. These projects include drilling of water boreholes, provision of electricity, roads, and health centers. There are other development agencies. Uh, which have made um, profound impact in terms of infrastructure. Asopadek uh, has a special focus on oil producing communities, but their sphere of coverage has gone beyond those oil producing communities. They have so many projects they have completed on our watch, and I'm proud of their stewardship. For the first time in its 28 years of existence, the Broadcasting Corporation of Abia BCA was connected to the national grid by construction of a state-of-the-earth 33 kV by 415 volts injection substation and its radio studio upgraded. I'm sure that our works speak for us. We have delivered many pioneering and indelible landmark infrastructural projects across various sectors of Abia State. These projects will serve as monuments to the work we did during our time long after we've left the stage. It is no longer news that Abia State is adjudged the most peaceful in Nigeria, a feat the governor, Dr. Okezen Ibazu, has attributed to the mercies of God. Abians will recall that prior to 2015, Aba was devastated as a result of the activities of hoodlums such as the notorious Osisi Kanku, who had a field day in the state, especially between 2009 and 2010. The business class, Traders deserted the town until he was subdued by the Ochendo administration. The scars he left, however, were still very visible and the Ibazu administration began to build on the achievements of the previous administration in this regard. We will continue to work to maintain the peace in our state until the end of our tenure. The peace and harmony of this state is paramount to us and we will ensure its preservation at all costs. The Okezin Ibazu administration donated 92 fully equipped security patrol vehicles to security agencies in the state, constructed the new Zone 9 police headquarters in Umwaya, launched the Abia State Crime Prevention and Management System, CPAMS, 
The government launched the Abia State Ministry of Homeland Security with over 500 trained officers. Constructed internal roads of the Aba Area Command Police Headquarters and provided accommodation for police officers. To change crime diary, we record our crime today digitally. Uh, now, if you're a criminal in your system, you're a criminal in homology, unless the police refuses to use it. We have a cloud based internet reportage of um, crime and criminals and what happens around Abia in government house. Big surveillance screen that enables me to see everything. In 2015, when he mounted the saddle of leadership in Abia State, Governor Okezi Bazo summarized his packages for the Abia health sector in one objective, to improve the life expectancy of Abians and ensure it is higher than the national average life expectancy. Two vulnerable extremes of the health sector and a middle point were identified. These two extremes include mother and child and geriatrics, whereas the middle point involved the youths who died as a result of road accidents, cardiovascular diseases and stroke, hence these interventions. The state government constructed five general hospitals at Okibe, Ikuano, Obingwa, Arochuku and Mboro, and equipped them with generators, hospital beds, and doctor's quarters. The administration delivered the first Abia State Children's Specialist Hospital, known as the Anna Marie Jackson Medical Center in Abia. This hospital is located on Bende Road, opposite the Central Police Station, Umwahia. At the primary health care centers in the state and other government-owned hospitals, antenatal and postnatal services, which include immunization, are equally carried out. To cater for the elderly, the state government initiated the free home care services for senior citizens who are homebound, disabled, and above 70 years of age. The government equally facilitated the training of their caregivers. The state government also paid the counterpart fund for the primary health care services. For every primary health care center in Abia State today, there is a management team made up of community leader, the metro, the women leader, and all of that. So they get funds direct from government to manage whatever comes out of their primary health care center. So the initiative is community-based and community-driven. Government equally employed technology in the launch of the Abia State Telehealth Initiative come dial a doc direct, linking about 70% of the 750 primary health care centers in the state. The first and only state in the Federation so far to tow this path, the scheme ensures that Abians can access health care services from medical doctors on the phone. The initiative also has video link to reach the doctor with. I monitor every primary health care center through our telehealth initiative. This is what is not found in any other place in Nigeria except in Abia. Almost 70% of these primary health care centers are linked to our telehealth. So they see 15 doctors that are in our call center every day and talk to them every day. One. The midwives and that attendants are retrained every day. They are supervised by these doctors every day. They are taught how to use vacuum to deliver babies every day. They respond to um, the health of mother before and after delivery every day. So it has raised the level of care at our primary health care centers from mere primary health care centers to a place where doctors actually interface. And today, there is no other state in Nigeria that has started establishing laboratories in primary health care centers except Abia. The state government equally deployed five new fully equipped mobile hospitals in the Abia Emergency Medical Services. 
The mobile hospitals are equipped with oxygen and other medical facilities. The intent is to pick up patients in emergency situations from their destinations and attend to them even on the way to the hospital. These vehicles were bought in Germany and configured in Turkey. One is a mobile theater. The other one is a mobile laboratory. The other one is a mobile hospital for Ops and Guiding. And the intention is that they will go on tour so that laboratory services will be provided. All of them, they have generators, they have solar power. They have everything that you need in those vehicles. Like I said, conceptualized in Germany but configured in Turkey. They are already in Abia, as I speak. So what it means is that if they are available and there are issues in the primary health care centers that are beyond what those vehicles can drive down and do the need for. These mobile hospitals are also equipped with facilities for surgery, infusion and even delivery. These interventions have helped reduce infant and maternal mortality by 71% and increased attendance to primary health care centers by 35%. The Ibazu administration has also built and equipped the multi-specialist hospital in Aba General Hospital, Aba. Such equipment include a 265-slide CT scan. The hospital will focus on kidney and heart but with competencies to handle eye, ear, nose, throat, obstetrics and gynecology. The center has doctor's quarters and upskill laboratory. The CT scan is a 265-slide CT scan. The best I have seen around the southeast and south, south south is 64 scan. There is no CT scan that is as effective and as big as the monster we had we are setting up in that hospital. 265 slide CT scan is already on ground. Um, it is going to focus on kidney and heart but with competencies to also handle uh, special clinics, including um, Osangani and all of that. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, the state government constructed new infectious disease hospital and COVID-19 laboratories in Aba and Umwaya and equally provided personal protective equipment to the Abia workforce, including pupils and students. High-end medical equipment were procured and distributed to hospitals and primary health centers in the state, as well as six brand new ambulances for state-owned hospitals. These items were not chosen randomly. An exploratory visit was paid from Project Cure to our various health institutions where they took notes and inventory of our critical needs and went back overseas to shop for these items. Therefore, these items are purpose-targeted. They are targeted at critical needs of our people, as was revealed by the visit of those who came to support us. I want to say quickly that it is the intention of this government that this effort will trickle down to the grassroots. Our intention is to improve the life expectancy of Ndavia. And we have carefully crafted a pathway that can enable us to achieve this. A new destitute home was also constructed in Aba. An ultra-modern diagnostic center has been constructed in Isuikweto for proper diagnosis of disease conditions. John Dewey said, quote, Education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself, unquote. That is the thought that fueled the impute made by the state government in the education sector. Within the tenure of the Ibazu administration, 700 new classrooms were constructed across the state. Digital learning was introduced. Four model schools were built in Ohafia, Abai, 
Osa in Umwahia and Osusa Mokwa in Obingwa to serve as standard for private school proprietors. These schools are each equipped with staff quarters, laboratory equipment and digital learning equipment. The Abia Smart School was also constructed. The Teachers Continuing Education Training Center, first of its kind in the state, was established to retrain teachers to meet international education standard. Education service providers from India and Australia were invited with appropriate legislative structure to facilitate the center which is still in operation. The Abia Free School Feeding Program was established before the federal government's intervention in free school feeding of pupils from primary 1 to 3. When the federal government launched her free school feeding program, Abia state government scaled up to include pupils in primary 1 to 6 in government-owned primary schools across the state. Consequently, more than 5,000 cooks were employed. Abia children in these schools have access to nutritious meals and good health. School enrollment in these public schools increased drastically. Today, Abia boasts of over 750,000 pupils in her public schools. It is therefore no wonder that for four consecutive years, Abia State clinched the first position in the West African School Certificate Examination. In the area of basic education, we have built over 600 classroom blocks across the state with four modern schools and three technical colleges. We have remained on the list of top performers in West African Examination Council exams in the country. And we are currently number two on the list of states with least number of, of out of school children in our country. Abia State facilitated the education of over 150 students in foreign schools on fully funded scholarship in the areas of medicine, information and communications technology, civil engineering, public health, masters in environmental science and management, masters in electrical cam electronics engineering in Flinders University, James Cook University, University of New England and Torrance University. The Okezie Bazo administration relocated the faculties of law and agriculture of the Abia State University Uturu to their Omaha campus. This is because for practical and more effective teaching and learning, students in law can now have access to the various courts in Omaha, while their counterparts in the Faculty of Agriculture can glean from the National Root Cross Research Institute and Michael Okwara University of Agriculture both in Umudike and are quite close. The Faculty of Engineering of Abia State University, which is almost completed, was also moved to Osisioma, close to Aba, so it can take advantage of materials and resources in Aba. This Osisioma axis also accommodates the almost completed permanent site of Abia State Polytechnic, Aba. With the sighting of Covenant Polytechnic, a private institution in Osisioma as well, the intention is to create an academic hub which will not only benefit the three institutions but will equally engender development within Osisiomangwa and Isialangwa South, the host local government areas. Private higher institutions which were cited in the state during the Ibazu administration include Nigerian British University, ASA, Omopai Polytechnic Asago Hafia and Clifford University Ihe. During the Ibazu administration, Abia State University Uturu improved in rating of universities in Nigeria from 97 to 26 to become the second best among state universities in Nigeria. Abia State today boasts of three of her female students who graduated with a first-class degree from ABSU and first-class from law school. Exceptional teachers in the state school system were motivated with annual Best Performance Car Awards for the best performing teacher in each of the three senatorial districts of the state. Education inspectors were equally empowered for effective monitoring of standards in schools. The Education for Employment program was equally launched. Uh, perhaps today, I have one of the few schools in Nigeria that has migrated to digital learning, in especially these our modern schools. The outcome of all of this is that 
Adia State became number one in West Africa school certificate exam for four years back to back. One of the areas of the state's strength is agriculture. Initially, the government intended to explore crops cultivation en masse, but this was hampered by limited land mass, which does not encourage mechanized agriculture. Hence, the focus moved to crops such as rice, palm oil, cassava, where the state has comparative advantage. To this end, Abia State government imported 4 million high-yield Tenera palm seedlings to replace the wild species distributed by the late agricultural legend Dr. M.I. Opara. This is in addition to seven cottage palm milling industries at different spots in the state. The target products were palm oil, palm kernel oil, among other products. This venture gave rise to establishment of cottage agro-processing industries in seven pilot local government areas of the state. If God did not bless us with huge acreage, so what is God saying? God is saying that we can become the capital for value addition. We can become the capital for value addition, which means processing and value addition has to be our strong point. So, okay, go produce your cocoa, whatever you want to produce, but we'll turn it to bon vita here. So processing became part of our thinking. But we could not resist mainstreaming certain crops, cassava and oil palm. Some communities in Abia cultivate rice, but would before now take them to neighboring states for milling. Today, the government has set up five cottage rice mills in Ataniabam, Acha, Bende, Ofeme, Ozuakoli and Arochuku, where there are rice plantations. This move necessitated the accelerated rice development agenda, which gave birth to Osika Babia, that is, rice produced in Abia. In addition, the state procured high yield rice seedlings from Cross River State and distributed to Abia rice farmers free of charge. This has improved rice yield by 150%. Today, some of the oil-palmed seedlings are used as road divides while oil palm estates have been revived. The government equally launched large-scale mushroom production where the initial trainees have today trained others. Popularly called Arabia, these very nutritious mushrooms have come to stay in Abia. The state government established a 150,000 birds capacity poultry cluster at Umosun Sulu in Isialangwa North LGA, where young people and willing learners are taught the various aspects of poultry management, including production, veterinary, marketing, etc. The cluster houses the pens for the birds, hostel, and classrooms for the learners. One of the major reasons behind the construction and rehabilitation of the many roads in Abia by the Okezienbazu administration is to improve trade and commerce in the state. Hence, you find the administration constructing link roads to various markets in the state, even roads connected to rural communities to facilitate evacuation of farm produce from rural to urban communities. For example, in his first 100 days, the government began working on Ukebu, Umola, and Obohil roads in Aba. Roads that will yield one into Aba from Ikorekbene, Cross River, and the Northern Nigeria, etc. Ikwerazu Road was also rehabilitated, giving options to the commuter. Today, all the markets in Aba have good road network connecting them. For example, from Ariaria, one can easily get to Osusun, then to Ezioku Market, from where one can access Ungwa Road Market. The list goes on. My pillar was trade and commerce. And trading happens in Ariaria. Happens in Ezioku Market, happens in Ungwa Road Market. That is why I'm interested in Ungwa Road. That's why I'm interested in Ezioku Road Market. That is why I'm interested in Fox Road. But the only thing 
that will make sense at the long run, not at the short run, is my impact in terms of what I promise people. How can I say that my pillar is trade and commerce? Then I will not mainstream the road leading to markets. The government made investments in trade and commerce, having constructed modern shops at the brand new A-line of the Ariara International Market in Aba, constructed new market shops at Ahi Ohoro, and the GSM complex. The government equally constructed the Amuzuku Relief Market at Amuzuku Umwaya, the Enyimba Mall in Aba, and 13 market stalls in different local government councils of the state through the office of the wife of the governor. To further support trade and commerce and ease of doing business, the Ipmazu administration conceptualized and built the Abia one-stop shop, which provides the opportunity for the businessman or woman to register and carry out his business activities in good time, no matter where he or she comes in from. My mandate to those who man our one-stop shop is to imagine uh, somebody from China or Japan Whatever you need to do to support that person to establish a business in Abia within 48 hours. So you remember the language barrier, you remember everything, and then uh, they go to work. Abia has won prizes under the office of the vice president. Abia State is one of the six states that contributed to Nigeria's improved rating on the scale of ease of doing business. On assumption of office, Dr. Okeze Ibazu did not hide his desire to impact on the Abia producing community. This passion drove him to embark on various projects in this regard. He, through the instrumentality of the state government, constructed the Enyimba Automated Shoe Factory, having sent about 30 Abia artisans to China for training in automated shoe production. These ones would in turn train others. Today, Abia artisans supply to clients across the nation and beyond. In response to this initiative, a footwear academy driven by the private sector has sprung up, where the governor even enrolled as a student. The Abia Micro Small and Medium Enterprises Microfinance Bank has been launched to provide soft loans to interested entrepreneurs. The Bank of Industry, which fled from the state, has now returned and is fully operational. The Aba garment factory at Umokalika is almost ready. It is envisaged that this factory will employ about 560 staff when operational. Of course, almost everyone knows that the chief executive of the state, Dr. Okezie Ibazu, is the brand ambassador of Made in Aba products. This disposition has in no small measure advertised the Aba artisan and his products. This move by the governor has instilled confidence and pride in the Aba artisan and Abians at large. The Ibazu administration supported the revival of Golden Guinea Breweries Umwaha in attracted Inner Galaxy Steel Company. It also envisioned the Enyimba Economic City, one of the most ambitious projects in the Southeast since the Civil War. It is located in parts of Okwa East, Okwa West, and Ugunabo. A city on its own, patterned after Dubai, this transgenerational project is situated within an area of 9,200 square kilometers and is bounded by River State and Aba, and is expected to generate over 700,000 jobs when fully operational. Having signed the necessary documents and effected approvals, including that of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, it will be operated under public-private partnership to eliminate government's undue influence. The Abia State House of Assembly has also passed the enabling laws. It will accommodate free trade zone, manufacturing hub, gas-free zone, uninterrupted power supply, railway services, airports. It is believed that successive governments would further develop this project for the good of Abians.
The OKC Basu administration bequeathed to Abians different power generation options. They include the Arrera International Market Independent Power Project, the Geometric Power Project covering nine local government councils. There are also individuals who have positioned generators away from the markets with which they supply power to the market. Thus, traders and businessmen can choose to access power through any of the aforementioned companies or through the EEDC for their businesses. It is gratifying to note that today, Arara International Market, Ekoha Shopping Center and Ahiohonro are lit at night. There is no telling the fact that this will further improve safety in our markets. Government has donated more than 1,000 transformers to communities in the state, established functional street lights and active traffic lights. Abia State Government equally facilitated automation of the state's internally generated revenue to reduce fraud, loss of revenue and double taxation. Through the instrumentality of the Abia State Planning Commission, the government put together a 30-year growth and development plan for the state, a document that has defined developmental pathway for the state. It is on record that Abia is the only state in the country that hosts two Premier League clubs, Enyimba and Abia Warriors Football Clubs, in addition to a female football club, the Abia Angels. Government equally donated two vehicles each to Enyimba and Abia Warriors Football Clubs and a vehicle to Abia Angels Football Club. Hitherto, when it rained, water would percolate on the Enyimba Stadium field and mopped up with films when matches were to be played. But today, the Ibazu administration has remodeled it, introduced new AstroTurf, floodlights and electronic scoreboard. The stadium now hosts matches by other clubs from outside the state. Mehmet Murat Ildan said, quote, The footprints of mankind will be seen on many different planets of the universe in the future. But those traces will never be as valuable as the traces on Earth because without the traces on Earth, other traces would not be possible." Unquote. Dr. Okezien Victor Ibazo worked with his team between 2015 and 2023 to plant and water seeds of development in the nooks and crannies of the state. <laughs> Certainly, this documentary has not captured all the details of the eight-year administration of Dr. Okezien Ibazu, but it tells us that he has laid a foundation for growth, development and sustainability. As he glowingly bows out of office, his footprints will give visibility to other footprints in the past and in the future, and posterity will not forget how he fought gallantly in the midst of daunting challenges. Ibazo has not done everything well, but he has played his part, leaving many indelible footprints, not just in the sands of time, but in the many hearts he has touched. We have been together on this journey for the last seven years and counting. We have weathered storms and celebrated triumphs. One thing I am not in doubt of is the fact that we have taken Abia further than we met it seven years ago. May I therefore call on Abians to continually uphold those in authority in prayers for peace of the land and wisdom to discharge our duties. To God be the glory. Obodo chukuta biabu, obodo ayana oraka, se timbu ekele, aigaru jarike ibu.